Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm very honored and happy to rise today to, uh, to share some opinions and feedback and thoughts on this uh, very important debate today. I'll start off by quoting uh, Tupac. He said, and I quote, every day I read the paper, there's another lie, end quote. That's what it feels like after nine years of this corrupt, incompetent, liberal NDP government. It's because every day, whether you're opening the news on your phone or you're opening up a newspaper, there's another scandal. There's always something that this liberal NDP government does every single day to embarrass Canadians and to embarrass us on the world stage. And what you can only expect from this Prime Minister is more corruption, more scandals, and more crime. I mean, this guy has been caught breaking the law more than once. In fact, he's broken the law more than every single prime minister before him. And it didn't stop there. As our leader had said, the rot is from the top down. He, he was such a great role model in breaking the law and having all more scandals than any prime minister before him, that his ministers did the exact same thing. They were also caught breaking the law. That's the kind of example this corrupt prime minister has set for this liberal NDP government who continues to hide from accountability and tries to take advantage of every single possible position that Canadians get put into because of his incompetence. Whether that was through the pandemic, trying to reward his friends at the WE, or, or this recent slush fund scandal, where under the guise of a new green economy, this is, it was just an excuse for him in order to create this slush fund for him and his corrupt liberal insiders. Along with this scandal, there is a massive conflict of interest and massive corrupt misuse of taxpayers' money. At a time when there are two million Canadians lining up at a food bank in a single month, a million more projected to this year, a third of which are children, and for the first time in my entire life in Canada, one in four Canadians are now skipping meals. Not something I thought Canada would be associated with, where food bank lineups are getting longer and Canadians are starting to skip meals. That's the sad reality. And as Canadians continue to line up at food banks, this corrupt liberal NDP government continues to line the pockets of its insiders. As they get richer, Canadians are getting poorer. There's no hope under this government. That once promised Canadian dream for millions of Canadians, whether they lived here their entire life or moved here for a better future, it's gone. It's become a nightmare. You can't afford a home. You can't afford groceries. You can't fill up a tank of gas like you used to without getting hit with high taxes. And it's only so that this Liberal NDP government can continue to shovel millions and billions of dollars to their rich Liberal insiders. So what are they doing right now? They're doing any and everything they can to avoid accountability. They are literally blocking and hiding documents. These documents are so damning that they're doing everything in their power to not have them released, including seizing parliament and freezing it the way it is right now. One thing is clear that this Liberal NDP government never acts in the best interest of Canadians. The Liberals only care about the liberal, Liberals. And with 
the government not wanting to turn over these documents, it's a clear sign that there is corruption on many levels that they're trying to hide. There is wrongdoing that they don't want to have come to light. There is something that is so damning to them that they cannot afford to have this come to light so Canadians can clearly see how corrupt this Liberal NDP government really is. They cover up and block this investigation so they can continue to fill the pockets of their Liberal insiders. $400 million of taxpayer money. $400 million. Not a small amount by far for everyday Canadians, not, not for the Liberal NDP government. There was, that money was sent to board members that sat on these companies that this Prime Minister created a slush fund for to reward them. This Liberal NDP government talks a big game about going green, you know, the, the economy of the future. But it's so clear to see all of these are just cover-up words for corruption so that they can try to get away with it. But Canadians are smarter than that. With the record that this Liberal NDP government has, they question any and everything because they know that this government doesn't have their best interest in mind. All they do is take advantage when someone is, is down. As I said before, when the pandemic was there, this government did any and everything they could in order to reward their friends. And now at a time when Canadians are lining up at food banks, they don't care. They created a slush fund for their Liberal insider buddies, $400 million. Whether this money was stolen or, or wasted, Canadians can't afford to feed for themselves. They can't house themselves right now. Yet they see this a corrupt government that, that continues to only feed more corruption to their, their insiders. That is the track record of this government. Only Canadians are paying for this corruption and greed. They're the only ones that are being impacted by this. It doesn't hurt the trust fund prime minister or his other cronies. It doesn't affect carbon tax Carney or any of these other corrupt insiders that get rewarded for doing absolutely nothing, just being friends with this prime minister. It's everyday Canadians that have to get hit with higher costs on gas, groceries, home heating, and for what? Everything that they've, this government has done, they've always tried to put a blanket over Canadians' eyes with some type of buzzword. They, they, they sold a carbon tax scam as that. When they first tried to sell that to Canadians, they tried to put a blanket over Canadians' eyes. They said that we'll, we'll introduce this carbon tax scam that will increase every year and Canadians, you know what? This carbon tax scam will fix the environment. All the forest fires will go away. All the floods will go away. We'll somehow make sure that it's sunny ways, sunny days for everybody. That was one really big lie that they sold with the carbon tax scam under the guise of, of, of environment or climate change. That was the buzzword for them. And then the second side of it because they, they don't respect the intellect of Canadians, is they said somehow that you pay into a tax and the government will give you more than you pay into the tax. That was another blatant lie by this government under the buzzword of, of climate change, which all ties back into this green slush fund. Both were proven wrong. Both those lies were proven wrong by their own parliamentary budgeting officer. Because forest fires, floods have not been fixed because somehow this government has started raising Canadians' taxes. In fact, their own environmental department admitted that the carbon tax scam is not measured on how much emissions go up or down. 
It's because it, it's, it's, it's all a fairy tale. And the second side to it that the Parliamentary Budgeting Officer confirmed today once again that a majority of households are worse off in paying this scam than what they get back in these so-called rebates. But Canadians know that. Canadians don't need anyone to tell them that. Because every time they go and they fill up a tank of gas, whether they're going to work or dropping off their kids at sports or tutoring, or whether they go to the grocery store and they see that the prices have gone up, or it's, it's getting cold now when they turn up the heat in their house and they get their bill. They all know it's a scam all along. I'll never forget when I was first running, going to a door of a, of a single mom in one of my communities. And when I introduced myself, she told me to hang on, close the door, took about a minute and came back. Came back with tears in her eyes and she was holding a bill. It was her natural glass bill. And I'll never forget she had a, uh, a, a sign on her lawn because she had to sell her house. She had just been laid off from her oil and gas job, which already, she was already saying it's because of the policies of this government. We already heard about Bill C-69 and the damaging imp impacts it had on Canadians and our industry and our economy. But she was one of those people that was affected by it. She has two kids. And so first she said, I have to sell my house. I cannot afford to pay my mortgage anymore. I need to feed my kids. Then with tears in her eyes, she showed me her bill, her natural gas bill. She pointed to that line where the carbon tax was there. And she said, I've been heating my house. My parents have been heating in their house the same way my whole life. Why am I getting punished with this carbon tax now? What did I do wrong? I haven't changed anything. I actually lost my job. But why am I getting punished? Because it's cold outside. What did I do wrong? And that is, that is the pain that this Liberal NDP government refuses to understand because they, they refuse to acknowledge the pain that it causes to these, these families all under the guise of climate change. They'll use these buzzwords and, and think they can get away with, with the, all the corruption that they have. It's that same single mom now that's getting, gonna have higher taxes because this Liberal NDP government under the guise of climate change wants to, wants to reward their friends so they'll collect more from Canadians. Those same ones that are lining up at the food banks and they don't care that they hit, get hit with all these scandals. It is their track record. That's who they are. They don't care about Canadians. You know, Biggie Smalls once said, more, more money, more problems. And with this government, it seems like it's more scandals, more taxes. Because it's Canadians that get hit with more taxes because of their scandals. They're less concerned about the accountability, about governing this country, and would rather keep protecting themselves from accountability by covering up as much as they can. Committee after committee, when it's the common sense conservatives that bring these scandals to light, the liberals are okay, they laugh it off because they know they have a partner in their corruption in the NDP. How many times have common sense conservatives brought forward motions and studies so that Canadians can get accountability to their money? But every single time, the Liberals just laugh it off. Their accomplice, their, their, their partners in covering up these scandals in the NDP, they know they, have, they, they, don't, they don't have to worry. And at the end of the day, it's Canadians that have to pay for all of that. But they're okay with that. They're, they're totally okay with that because they can all just hide under this, this cloud of, of climate change somehow. We saw over the, over the pandemic, the We Charity scandal, $900 million to Liberal insiders that paid off the Prime Minister's family. 
There wasn't any accountability until common sense conservatives brought that forward. This prime minister would rather, rather prorogue parliament, as we saw then, than face accountability. That's who he is. That's exactly who this prime minister is. Someone who probably hasn't filled up gas in his own tank in his life or probably gone grocery shopping himself before. And that is exactly why he does not care. The Arrive Scam scandal. $60 million to liberal crony insiders for an app that didn't work and that nobody wanted. But once again, the, this corrupt liberal NDP government under the guise of the pa pandemic tried to reward their insiders. There was people who literally did no work that got paid off. And once again, as liberal insiders line up their pockets and Canadians line up at food banks, it's the NDP who helped get this liberal, corrupt liberal government through that, all these scandals one by one. SNC-Lavalin not only unraveled a lot of the corruption and the scandals of this government, but also proved how much of a fake feminist this prime minister truly is. Because when his brave indigenous justice minister, Jody Wilson-Raybould, stood up to his corruption, what did he do? He didn't admit it. He didn't take any accountability or responsibility. He fired her. He threw her under the bus, as a fake feminist does. So not only just being corrupt and scandal-ridden, he also proved how much of a fake feminist he is through that scandal. And this is a pattern of this prime minister, of being a fake feminist, throwing women who stand up to his corruption under the bus. It's a, it's, he, he's full of scandals and corruption. And this $400 million scandal now is, is on Canadians once again. He gets to be corrupt. He gets to do whatever he wants to reward his liberal insiders because it's all on Canadian dime. He has the Canadian credit card in his hand and he's spending like, like there is no end. There is no limit to that credit card. All we've seen from these, this liberal NDP government is more scandals, more corruption, and more cover-ups. The economy is in the toilet right now. The carbon tax scam we know puts a big hole in our GDP, but because of the failed policies, GDP per person in this country keeps on declining. It's at a lower level today than it is at 2014. And can you believe, Mr. Speaker, can you believe that Canada's output per person is lower Which is uh, Richmond Hill. I've never raised on this, but I understand there's a, there's a point of privilege on misleading statements. And I've been sitting here listening to the member opposite for the last however long it's been, eight minutes, and heard so many misleading statements that I think are detrimental, not only to our Prime Minister, but to myself. I am part of the Environment Committee that put in place these policies. And so I'm just asking the Speaker, when can a point of privilege for misleading statements be used when you sit and hear them over and over and over and over again? I would probably suggest the Honourable Member can go to her House Leader and, and uh, have, the, have the discussion. Of course, uh, uh, points of privilege uh, would need, a, need an hour's notice to be able to come to, to the floor of the, ta of, of the uh, floor. So if the, if the Honourable Member finds there's a point of order, a point of privilege, and her privileges have been, have been, uh, been, uh, been, been, been uh, moved upon, or uh, that she, of course, uh, can, can bring that to her House Leader and, and notice can be given to the, to the, to the, to the Speaker. The, uh, the, honourable, the Honourable Member for uh, Aurora Oak Ridge, Richmond Hill. Yes, I was actually doing research on it and found that some could be made directly without an hour's notice. And one of them was on misleading statements. So I'm just wondering uh, what, is, what is the circumstances under which it can be done and, and how many misleading statements have to be made before one can actually raise on that point.
Oh, and, and like, like I said, when it comes to information like this, uh, this is a point of debate. Uh, we, we accept uh, individuals to be honourable members uh, when they bring this information forward. So again, uh, if you want to bring, bring it forward and, and talk, to the, talk to the table for a few moments, and maybe we can, we can come up with something. But for the time being, I believe this is a debate, uh, the debate we've been having for the last seven days. Uh, there's all been very similar. We haven't called anything else out. Uh, no one else has called anything out. So I would all, uh, ask the honourable member to maybe bring it to the table, and we can, we can have that discussion. The Honourable Member Calgary Force Long. A Liberal finally admitted and took some accountability. She just said that her, that it's their policies, they helped form those policies. It's those same policies that sent two million Canadians into a food bank, that allowed all this corruption, something that we're talking about. The Honourable Member for Oak, Aurora Oak Ridges, uh, Richmond Hill. Thank you. What a privilege. This, this member opposite is now saying to me that I forced two million Canadians to go to food banks as part of this government bringing forward these policies. That's completely misleading. And I take it as a point of privilege. Well, I think, I think we are getting to points of order is really what we're doing. The Honourable Member Timmins James Bay, then I'll go over to, uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, it's hardly an impressive speech from my Honourable colleague from the Conservatives, but I'm sorry that the member for the Liberals is getting in such a flap. That is not a point of privilege. It's a point of debate. So just let's stay focused on the issue at hand. Uh, the Honourable Cold Lake. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, this is a point of order, not a point of privilege. And if the member really wants, I would suggest that she read Bosch and Gagnon, and it stipulates these quite clearly. Thank you. Again, I think we are de 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 descending into uh, a lot of debate here. Um, and the, the floor, of course, is with the Honourable Member for Calgary Forest Lawn for the uh, minute and 38 seconds that remain. I want to thank that Liberal member for putting another example of another unhinged Liberal. But that's all they all become once their corruption and scandals come to light. I guess we're into point of orders today, so the Honourable uh, Member Tim, Tim is James Bay. Well, he can't make an accusation that someone's unhinged because she raises a point. That's just cheap. So if he can't at, uh, do a debate without being cheap, I think, Speaker, you have to call that out. I believe we're falling into debate even, even deeper, so we can't be debating the debate. Uh, the Honourable Member for Calgary uh, Forest Lawn uh, to, uh, to finish up with the minute and 26 seconds that are remaining. Not only do we have unhinged Liberals in here, but another example of what I've been talking about in my speech, that it's always the NDP that cover up all the corruption and scandals. It's on full display in the House again. This is exactly why Canadians have lost trust in this Liberal NDP government. They've lost faith in them. That's why they want a carbon tax election now. They're fed up of the scandals. They're fed up of the cover-up, like the slush fund of $400 million that rewarded Liberal insiders. It's time to call a carbon tax election. Canadians want the Canada back that is not anymore under this Liberal NDP government. All we hear across this country is Canada is not the same Canada anymore. But that's why we're calling for, and Canadians are calling for a carbon tax election. So. The, our common sense conservative leader can axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime, including the corruption and scandals, and bring back that Canada we all once knew and still loved. And now it's up to them to call it. Let's do it now.